Our electrified future is bright. For your consideration, Exhibit A. This is the Hyundai Ionic 5. Hyundai calls it a crossover utility vehicle, but I refuse to. This fully electric conveyance, which looks suspiciously like a hatchback, is about the same size as a Hyundai Tucson SUV, and it competes with the Ford Mustang Mach-E, Volkswagen ID.4, the Nissan Aria, and maybe the Tesla Model Y, though the Model Y is much pricier. More on pricing shortly. The rear-wheel drive Ionic 5, huh, that rhymes, can cover an EPA-estimated 303 miles and runs from 0 to 60 miles per hour in the low 7-second range. Choose the dual-motor all-wheel drive version, and it'll zip from 0 to 60 in a Hyundai-estimated 5.1 seconds with a range of 256 miles. I'm driving the all-wheel drive version. Let's convert some electrons into fun. Yeah! The battery pack is a 77.4 kilowatt hour unit with an 800 volt architecture allowing for uncommonly fast recharge times. According to Hyundai, a 10% to 80% charge should only take about 18 minutes, assuming you've got access to a charger that can deliver 235 kilowatts. Use a more common 150 kilowatt DC fast charger and that 10% to 80% charge time takes about 25 minutes. With a level 2 home charger, a 10% battery should be fully charged in less than 7 hours. Interestingly, the Ionic 5 has vehicle to load abilities, meaning you can use the Ionic 5 to power items with a 120 volt accessory outlet. If you've ever wanted to power a child's bouncy house with a car, the Ionic 5 is your huckleberry. We've been talking about technical stuff an awful lot. Let's break from that and get subjective. Hey, the Ionic 5's exterior sure is eye-catching. I personally love these sharp creases, pixelated light motif, and yes, its hatchback profile. It's also got a clamshell hood, flush door handles, as is the electric car way, a super long wheelbase, and six intriguing exterior colors, including blue, teal, and matte gray. You don't have to like how the Ionic looks, but you do have to respect Hyundai's willingness to get weird. Inside, the cabin is a bit less daring, but it is filled with recycled and sustainable materials. The front seats are also noteworthy for their good lateral support and lack of pressure points, though the headrest felt a little intrusive for my taste. Overall, I think the interior looks handsome and feels decently upscale. But the true test is whether an utterly average American male can fit inside. Luckily, I know a guy. Seated in the front here, the uh, driving position is actually quite nice. I do wish that the steering wheel telescoped just a little bit more, but yeah, no, I can get into a good driving position. The center console slides forward and back five and a half inches, which is kind of cool. And then if you're charging your electric car, and I certainly hope you are, you can adopt this super reclined position. Time to catch up on my cocoa melon. <laughs> In the back, headroom and legroom are outstanding. There's also a flat floor, which is nice for whoever is seated in the middle, though my hair does slightly brush the headliner when I'm positioned here. But overall, for a comparatively small vehicle, the Hyundai Ionic 5 is very roomy. By the numbers, the Mustang Mach-E and Volkswagen ID.4 have more cargo space, but 27.2 cubic feet here in the Ionic 5 is still plenty of room to haul around your friend's gear and a uh, pie from the Julian Pie Company. Good job, Ionic. Oh, and if you're curious, you got this little cargo cover here, and if I want to lower these seats, I have to go all the way around to the other side. Ooh, ah, that's going on your permanent record, Ionic 5. Ah. Ah. Lastly, there is a frunk, but it's a little guy. If I want to haul around this pie and my massive ego, I'm going to have to use the trunk. hands off my pie. So far, the Ionic 5 looks promising, but will all that potential be undone by uninspired road manners? No, the Ionic drives great. It pulls confidently even when you're already at speed. No, it's not Tesla fast, but it does feel punchy. Punch. The Ionic 5 offers four drive modes, and you can also choose between four regenerative braking profiles using paddle shifters on the steering wheel. With maximum regen selected, I can one pedal drive the Ionic 5. Hey, that rhymes. I'm coming to a complete stop here, and I'm not going to touch the brake pedal. Oh, 
let's see what happens when we come to a stop. Will it be smooth? I hate to say it, but I don't think I could have done that any better myself. I'll add that the texture on the back of the paddles feels lovely. And if you do use the brake pedal, your foot will be greeted by a completely natural feel. In terms of road comfort, the Ionic 5 ranks well. It rides very smoothly, and that's matched to a cabin that is quiet, which is really hard too, because oftentimes in gasoline cars, the engine noise covers up some of the sounds that the, uh, the wind and the road are making, but not here, no. It's uh, genuinely quiet. If you're driving with Gusto, the steering feels tight and precise, and when you have sport mode activated, there's a satisfying heft. My pie is sliding around. One thing I've noticed, though, is that there's not a lot of information that comes through the steering wheel, but that's okay. If you're driving fast enough, just listen for the tires. Are they squealing? Then you're going fast enough. Push it around corners, and you will notice some body roll, but the Ionic can indeed hustle if you're feeling the need. The need to drive at a slightly quicker pace than normal. While the 77.4 kilowatt hour battery pack found in our test car powers nearly all Ionic 5 trims, the cheapest option is the Ionic 5 SE standard range trim, featuring a 58 kilowatt hour battery pack for $39,700, not including destination fees or federal or state tax incentives. That standard range rendition is rated to cover 220 miles and comes with a 168 horsepower motor driving the rear wheels. Those standard wheels happen to be 19 inches, plus their standard LED lighting inside and out, and dual 12.3 inch screens for the gauge cluster, and the super snappy infotainment interface. Choose the rear wheel drive SE trim with the 77.4 kilowatt hour battery pack, and the MSRP jumps to 43,650 bucks. Is the bigger battery pack's extra 57 horsepower and 83 miles of range worth four grand? Personally, yes, but follow your heart. Adding all-wheel drive to the SE and SEL trims tacks on an extra $3,500 to the price tag. In most expensive SEL all-wheel drive limited form, the asking price reaches $54,500. Again, not including destination charges. On the higher SEL and limited trims, you'll find upgrades like a hands-free liftgate, panoramic moonroof, 360-degree camera system, remote parking abilities, and a head-up display with augmented reality functions. Regardless of trim, all Ionic 5s include a complete suite of active driver assist tech. Things like lane keeping assist, automatic emergency braking with bicyclist and pedestrian detection, and a range of capabilities to help steer you around threats and prevent you from pulling in front of other cars at intersections. One other bit of driver assistance is highway driving assist. This optional system can now adjust the vehicle's position in its lane, accounting for adjacent vehicles that get a bit too close or cut in front of you. At launch, the Ionic 5 will only be offered in select states, but it'll have a wider rollout over time. Good thing, because Hyundai's hatchback, yes, I'm sticking with the hatchback thing, is a compelling addition to the modern electric car landscape. If you instinctively cringe when people like me talk about our electrified futures, that's fine. Just know that widespread adoption of electric cars doesn't have to suck. Some electric cars will be quirky, fun, and practical. Exhibit A.